learned about this uh, software of uh, generative design and topology optimization from the company uh, Parameters. Okay, I will add the link into the description so you can you can look for it. Um, it's a software to to create parts using uh, generative design software or topology optimization is as well called. Okay. Uh, it's something that I always wanted to to test in some time ago, but uh, never have time to do so. And now this uh, company they gave me for free some tokens in order to use their, their their software. So I decided to try it and to give it a go with some parts. And in this video, I want to show you uh, how you can use it and what I think about it and so on. Uh, well, you 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 have to get get in mind that it's uh, I had no previous experience on on this kind of software. Uh, so uh, maybe all my opinions are not uh, uh, correct, but uh, I hope it can help you to to understand a little bit a little better this uh, this software and this uh, platform in particular. Okay, and what are my finds out? Um, you enter the software by signing in. Obviously, you have to sign in with your details and so on, and they will give you access uh, after a few time and. And as well, in my case, they give me some free tokens, and as well, they have an offer now. You can get some some free tokens so you can do just your first test. So I, I run some some tests in order to uh, to check how it works and so on. Um, well, the first thing you need in most of these kind of programs, what I have found out, is you need some parts to be imported into the software. Okay, uh, where the software is gonna create the the parts. Okay. Uh, what uh, I'm going to do in this video is to create um, a knuckle, a steering knuckle for a light electric vehicle. Okay, uh, steering knuckle for the people who don't know is the piece that holds the wheel axle together with the suspension and with the steering rods and suspension rods and so on. Usually, it's a quite complicated part, and it is uh, sometimes it's just made just uh, taking a, a piece of uh, aluminium or iron and just uh, knocking off uh, all the parts that uh, you think that they are not uh, needed and usually these pieces are quite bulky and quite heavy and in some cases they have a uh, quite big influence in the car handling and so on so using a generative design or topology optimization for this kind of parts it's very very interesting because uh, you can increase uh, you can decrease the weight of the part a lot as well you can probably increase the rigidity of the part and you know make it just lighter and stronger it's very very interesting and actually it's a quite complex part to to design so any help on designing this part is very 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 good to, to have okay Okay, like I said, um, what you need to give to the program in order to perform its task is uh, area of design, okay? Uh, well, in this other side, uh, there's less parts, so it's easier to, to see how, how it is, okay? Okay, first you have to give to the program the area where the program can create the part, okay? This area I have the designed with this uh, blue block that you can see here, okay? This is the... Uh, oops, sorry. Okay, this is the area where uh, the the software is gonna create the part. Okay, you can see uh, that it has uh, inside of the area. Okay, okay. Inside of the area, there is those little cylinders. Okay, those little cylinders are areas where the software is not going to construct anything, and it's, they are gonna be kept on the construction. Okay, these areas, as you can see, is where the screws will hold this, uh, these rods and where the extrude from the suspension will come over this uh, blue part here. Okay, so these uh, little cylinders and other parts are going to be um, left like they are on the construction and they are going to be used in order to, to, uh, to apply the loads for the part and so on. As well, you can see that the, the blue part, the designing part, okay, this, this part, has some holes, okay? Those holes are in order to uh, let, you know, the screws get in. You know, I have a space to put my screw through this cylinder and to put the nut and to tighten it and so on. So in these areas where there's holes, there's not going to be material. Only in the areas where there is uh, defining this, uh, this, this block, okay? Okay, the next step when you have this block, uh, design it, okay, you go to, uh, you have to download it in a step format, okay, so uh, 
here I got the part studio where I got all the all the parts from this block so I just uh, oh sorry not here um, here here is the the part studio where is where are all the parts so I just choose all the all the parts that they are going to be involved in the in the construction of the of the part okay and I download it all together for uh, in the step format okay they have to be downloaded all together all in one single go because if you go one by one in the the software will understand that it's 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 one will be just one part so just download it all together like it will like it will be an assembly studio or something like that okay so just go and export we'll export like a step format okay it just take some seconds from here to download Okay, and now we go here and in the Cognicat, which is the name they given to their software from parameters uh, platform, we just click here on new design and we'll open a window where it says what you have to do. You have to import in a step uh, file and you have to import the area where the construction is going to be made and the non-design area where it's going to, there's not going to modify them on the, on the design. Oh, I have to, I forgot to uh, comment you one thing. Okay, uh, I have uploaded as well this part here, okay, which is not uh, is not any of this. It's not the designing area, and it's not going to be uh, area. It's, it's going to be uh, in, in inside of the design. Okay, it's another part that is. I'm going to use it in order to apply loads. Okay, I will. You will see later how how is that. So we go to here. We select the file to upload, which is this one here and click open and upload it takes a little while to upload not much um, okay but uh, I suppose it's because uh, I'm in Europe and they are in oh here it is oh so it, it didn't talk well it's, it's important so it, it takes some some minutes nothing nothing serious so I'm not gonna make you nothing wait so I'm gonna stop the video and then uh, start again when when it's finished Okay, the, the files are uploaded. Uh, I want to clarify that, that it doesn't take really long. I mean, it's just uh, about uh, one minute or so to to upload, so nothing nothing serious or to worry about. I suppose that it will probably improve with the time. Okay, so now we can go to, well, the first thing I uh, I recommend is to create a copy of this. Uh, I already modified the name to original, so um, to, in order to have the original file here without any modification, we just go and we just duplicate it. Okay, I'm gonna... <clears throat> okay here we have a, a copy of it. I'm gonna call it test one, and we're gonna start to work on it. Okay, test one, save. Okay, and we go and we. In order to enter to the application, we just click here on edit, and it, all our parts will appear here on the working space. Okay, this is the working space, okay, with all the parts here. Uh, the first thing, well, this is a quite simple to follow and to do. Okay, you have five steps here to, to follow in order. Okay, you can always go back and modify any of uh, what you have uh, inserted in all the details. That it's quite quite clear. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to add a material. Okay, it's got a materials library, quite uh, quite complete with a lot of uh, materials. Okay, and in this case, you have to choose the material which is going to be the part made of. Okay, in this case, I'm going to do it in uh, polyamida or nylon, uh, kind of PA6 nylon. Okay, it's not exactly uh, this PA6, so I'm going to use. Uh, a nylon copper from Polymaker, which is a mix of uh, uh, nylon PA6 and PA6.6, okay, which have a little differences on the characteristics. You can change here, like as you see, the main characteristics, like the density. We're going to use uh, this density of this one is a bit higher, 1,920 kilograms per metric cubic meter. The John modulus is a bit higher. I downloaded all this information from the uh, material manufacturer. Okay, I didn't have the poison ratio of the material, but I suppose that it will not change uh, much from any other kind of uh, of nylon. Okay, 
so we can leave it like like it is okay and the geo maximum stress is uh 65 in this case 65.3 okay and thermal spacing in, in this case uh it's a plastic so there will be not much and actually it's not gonna be holding out of uh heat or, or cold so not big difference on, on that if it was a metal probably you have to put here something uh in order to to get the proper parts and so on so we go to the next step you see here have saved nylon copper as the material okay you can always like i said you can always come back and edit it here okay and so we can go to the next step the next step is to define what is the design space where the software can uh, make the part okay the design space is this design block block okay that i have uh, uploaded so we define this as the area where the, the software can create a part. And like it's here again, and we go to the next step. Now we tell which are the non-design features. So the parts that have to be kept like they, they are, have been designed, okay? All of those uh, small cylinders that are, you have seen in other parts, okay? And it's this one here, you just select them all, okay? Okay, we have them all, except that part here that I'd say, the, this part here inside, because I want it to be a hole, I don't want it, um, any material on this area, but I need this uh, piece because uh, it's uh, going to be holded by the structure. Okay, so we go, we have uh, already defined which are the parts we have to, that have to be kept, and we go to the next step. Okay, here you can choose uh, between uh, two... Uh, this is the load cases, okay? So you can define your own the, the load cases manually, or you can let uh, the, intelli the artificial intelligence from the software to uh, create the part for you and apply the loads as it uh, may supposed to be. I actually made a test some time ago, okay, with one part in order to do it by uh, driving by the artificial intelligence, okay? And uh, you can we can view it here. And actually, the part is quite similar of what we are going to get at the at the end. Okay, uh, this is a B zero uh, evolution of this part, so it's it's not exactly like like it was going to be. But it's quite in interesting that uh, without much work, you can create a part. And actually, for simple parts with a very rational loads, uh, it could be a very interesting uh, option to to use. Okay, and very very fast to to do the design. Okay, so they just so this part was made by by the intelligence artificial without uh, adding any any loads. Okay, so let's go back to the to where we were. <coughs> uh, so we're gonna manually define all the all the loads. Okay, so let's charge the first load. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a generative design because we could do a, a finite element analysis on this uh, on this software. Okay. And actually, when you generate the design, the software uh, creates a finite element analysis for all the parts and all the loads you have uh, created, okay? So we go for the generative design, and we can start to uh, add all cases that we want. We're gonna add the first one is uh, suspension load. Suspension load, suspension. And well, this is a part that is reversible. It can be used for the left or the right side of the vehicle. So we're gonna create the uh, load for the left side, okay, for the suspension. And we choose here, we want to do a static or vibration. Also, this uh, part is gonna have, uh, it's gonna be uh, suffering some vibrations. I don't know the masses that are gonna be attached exactly to it. So I decided to go by the static way and because it's even simpler. Okay, so let's go to the first uh, <coughs> step. Now we have to define which parts are attached to the structure, okay, and in which direction. So we choose all the parts that are attached. In this case, when it's installed on the left side, which is that one here, that one, this one, this one, and this one here. No, sorry, not this one. Okay, and okay, like I said, this is the part. Now this part is attached to the structure. Okay, but it's not, like I said, it's not in design, so, but we can still use it. 
okay, in the in the process. So we've got all the parts here, okay, uh, define it that are attached to the structure. Now we can define for each part which one it's uh, in which direction is attached to the structure, okay. And now here it's something that I found uh, a bit difficult because you don't know which is part nine, which is part one. I think the software should highlight when you are, you know, browsing through here, you should highlight the parts. Because the only way to know if this is part nine or part six or whatever is to unselect it and select it. You know, it's and we see that the part nine is disappearing from the list, so this is the part nine. Okay. In this case, there is very few parts, but if there was a lot of parts, it would be, I understand, very difficult to to define. And if you see, uh, it doesn't um, select them in, in order. It's just the order is quite random, so you have to do it like like this, not something like, something like this. So this part is only uh, attached because there is a um, rod end uh, here attached to this part. It's only uh, fixed on the X axis and the X direction, sorry. Okay, so we keep save this other part here, which is part uh, eight here. It's touched as well only on the X direction. So we click off this others, save. This one here is part seven. And this one is on the Y direction. Six. Okay, and this one here. It's part six, and it's touches in C direction, set, okay. And this last one here, I suppose it's part one, yes, part one. It's touched on, not set, because, okay. Okay, so we have defined it, uh, all the attachments to the structure, which are fixed to the structure, and in which direction is each one. And we click next. Okay, now uh, we have to uh, assign where the loads are going to be uh, carried. So the main load in this case is going to be carried by the uh, axle of the, of the wheel, okay, in perpendicular direction to the ground. So as you can see, we have selected two parts. Okay, we could add one uh, force in each one, or we could edit in group, which is in this case the most interesting. Because the uh, we you can, we can choose where which point the force supply. In this case, the force supply where the wheel uh, contacts the ground, which is uh, in this uh, coordinates that I took from the from the design, which is x forty seven and uh, for forty three six for the y and is the floor, so it's zero here. Okay, so that's the point where the uh, force is going to be applied in this here, this black point here. In this case, it's a force on set of, I have calculated it's 2,950 newtons, okay? You can as well apply a, a moment forces, okay? Moment, uh, yeah, moment forces on, on, on the points or on the parts, okay? So what uh, we do now is apply to parts, and you will see here that two uh, nice uh, vectors in the direction of the forces are drawing here in the design. You can see here, you have to find it for each part, how much uh, load I'm gonna carry with that force on that point, okay? I'm gonna, well, you just click save, and we can generate more load cases. I'm gonna generate the next load cases, which is uh, another static one, and suspension, suspend, for the right side of the vehicle, okay. I'm gonna keep on adding all the all the load cases that the, I need for this part, and I'm gonna cut the video so it's not very long in, to to do so. So when I, they are all loaded, I will come back. Okay, I have finished it to define all the load cases. Okay, uh, you can see them here, and you can you know uh, check them all the parameters here, all the parts, uh, all the boundary conditions, and the loads that have been created here. And as well, you have a very nice function that you can do it uh, visually. You can see each one. Okay, uh, you can highlight each one. For example, this is the load for the suspension uh, when the part is 
attach it to the left side of the vehicle, okay? And this is on the right side. And this is a uh, brake when the, when the vehicle is braking on the left side. Brake when the vehicle is braking on the right side. And the, the load on turning in and the load or turning in on the one side and the other side. Okay, then add the turning out because it's uh, equivalent to the uh, suspension load, so it was not necessary to, to add it. Okay, so uh, now the next we go to the next step. Next step, you have two options. You maximization of the sign stiffness to specific fraction of the material. Okay, this is just, a, let's say, an exploration how the, the, the part can be in this space and so on. And what but usually we want is the lighting lightweight uh, possible with the maximum uh, uh, stiffness for the for the stress that we are going to have on this on this material okay so um, it will it, it will include as well the formations and vibrations constraints okay but uh, not for now you will see um, okay the objective obviously it's minimize mass okay and uh, here you can add first um, what is the um, value of the um, stress limit for the H load. Okay, so here it's about the 70% of the uh, material. You see the GV stress is 65. They have reduced it to 45, which is around 30% less than the maximum. Okay, because I'm going to print this uh, part on, it's going to be printed possibly on a, on, a, on a desktop printer, not an industrial printer, I'm going to reduce it to uh, 50%, uh, you know? So 50%, it's of uh, 65, it's more or less 32.5, let's say 33. I'm going to put it in 33 in order to have more safety margin for all the all the stresses on every, on every load case, okay? Even if you know the orientation where you're going to print, how you're going to print the part, you can uh, always change here because you know in set, in set direction the printed parts have usually less uh, less strength than on the other directions so you can if you know how you're going to print it you can you know uh, make uh, this uh, meet you know that uh, special circumstances for that for the material uh, printed okay and <clears throat> So now we can go to, as like you say, you can put uh, deformation constraints and vibration constraints, but they are not activated yet. So we go to the next step, okay? And now here we have the next step. We can choose between additive manufacturing or uh, investment cast or casting, okay? In this case, it's, it's, uh, it's casting, okay? It's, sorry, it's, it's uh, 3D printing, okay? So we choose 3D printing and we can choose here which is the angle we want the uh, overhang angle. Uh, usually between 45 and 55, so we can leave it like uh, 50. Uh, anyway, uh, probably I'm not gonna use the, um, the supports and, and, the, and the orientation that this uh, software provides me, but uh, if you use it, you can have uh, the supports and everything already created by the, by the software, and here you will decide the overhang angle, okay? Uh, resolution. Okay, if you want a better quality surface and better quality part, you can choose between different uh, resolution quality. Uh, this is, let's say, if you go up, it will charge you here. You know, uh, you have to to pay for the for the service in tokens. Okay, obviously, as high is the resolution, as high is the price of the of the optimization of the part. And you see, if we go to low, it's, it's only uh, forty eight uh, tokens. But if we go just to medium, it goes up to 120 tokens, which is uh, much more. Okay, we are going to leave it in low because I only have uh, 60 tokens left, so uh, I can afford that. Okay, and on as again, we can choose between the speed that they this is going to perform the part. We can go from slow to medium and fast. You know, obviously it's more expensive. You go faster, and because it's uh, it's not for me a question of time, so I'm going to put it on on slow. And we just can go and click on the sign and go and go for it. But before I click on the sign, I what I normally do or what I should do is to check every parameter that I have entered that everything is is right. And another point, it is very interesting. We're going to close this window, okay? 
to uh, create, we have here the part already edited, and we create a, a copy of this of this file because as soon as we send it to be um, optimized, it will be deleted. This file and we will not have again the the we will not have the all the information that we insert in it. So let's duplicate it and create a copy of it. And just now we can uh, we can send to optimize whichever want of of it. Okay. So we're going to send uh, this one. We're going to send it to optimize it. Okay. So now we go to the uh, file that we have uh, created, or can be the, the other one, and we just go to edit, and we go to the to the last uh, last uh, part of the of the of the process, and we just click on design, and when you click on design, this uh, green uh, screen appears. That means that it's been sent to optimization. And we can see here now it's a uh, queue it and in a while it will start to to run the the process it will take some some hours so we left it working and we come back later when it's uh, finished i will show you the result Okay, the optimization uh, finished it. Uh, I was not able to make the video just straight away because I had a problem in the microphone that I think I have uh, fixed it now. But I was able in this time to to run more more tests, and you know, so uh, we can see some of the of the results. Okay, here is here is one. You can just click on it, and you will have a, a preview of the of the model. You know, and you can you can see how it have uh, finishes it. You know, and here is. Uh, Another one here, for example, this one, okay, where you can see the the model. This this are two, this is almost the same um, part, but with different uh, materials and constraints and uh, uh, load cases. So that's why it's so different one from from the other. Okay, now you can enter in the in the parts. Just clicking here on, on view, and you can see that it already have uh, performed. Um, um, finite element analysis over them on the formation on stress for every load case. So this is very interesting because it's just a free thing that you get straight away. Okay, and actually you can see uh, simulated deformations and see how it made the form uh, under the load uh, that you are you are uh, giving it to it. Okay, this is very good because you can you see for example this red area for you know in order to decrease the deformation you can increase the material on this area. Or even if you go into a stress, you can, you know, for example, here in the red areas, you could make these parts a bit larger or add a, something like a, a little uh, metallic part in, in here or, you know, whatever you think that can be, you know, to, in order to increase the stiffness of the part or the, or the length or the life of the part, okay? Um, here's the other part, you can see this is a bit more bulky, okay? And again, you got all the... All the deformations and stresses for every here you got all the loads you just change the load and it will change you know how the part will perform okay this part has, is more bulky you see it's more uh, there is no so many big stress areas or and the deformations are as well very much uh, reduced now as well you can download the uh, optimized part in two formats you can download it on <coughs> on a step so it can be included back again into your part studio or assembly studios and as well, you can obviously uh, modify it or add more uh, parts to it or whatever is need. And as well, you can download it on STL format. You can download it in three different ways, in the original orientation that you inserted the model or in a minimum supported surface area, which is good, very good if you've got a very small, a small uh, bed uh, areas or in a minimum volume of supports or su uh, minimum material for supports. Okay, three, the three uh, ways it works really, really well. I mean, it's, it's well, really well calculated. Okay, uh, as well, uh, we can go to, uh, back to um, Comunicat and let me show you a couple of things more here. Okay, you can create, well, we have explored the mechanical design 
but there is a way to make a thermal design which is good very good for dissipation uh, on parts or radiators or things like that okay you can do a reverse engineering you just load a part you have created whatever it's uh, um, designed by uh, topology optimization or it's just a normal part and you, it will uh, just run a, an analysis over it okay and give you all the final element uh, results and as well you can uh, load your design and create the structures for the for the supports okay on the orientation that you have uh, given to the to the part okay so that's something that you can you can do as well on this this program we just only have explored this area which is the, the mechanical design okay and finally the conclusions uh, while using the software I uh, just been noticing some little uh, problems of user experience you know it's sometimes it's um, be difficult to find which parts are which or you know uh, there is some uh, little not errors but a bit difficult to understand some of the descriptions and little things like that not very serious and I know that for sure when they release more versions those problems are gonna be solved and it's gonna be even easier to easier to use than what it is you know and a technical problem that i have found out the that the boundary conditions when you define and you can define them you know if they are restrained in x uh, y and c direction but they don't they are not restrained or or released or for turning so that's something that uh, i commented to them together with some other things and they told me on, on the new release they're gonna come out probably soon uh, it's gonna be fixed well not fixed you know added to the to the platform so it's going to be more uh, complete and more easy to use they told me as well they probably add some uh, new descriptions and images so everything is going to be much uh, nicer and easier to use okay um as well uh, you know in the good areas of the, it's that uh, this is an on cloud uh, platform so uh, maybe some people may think it and it's cannot maybe not be useful for for theirs because uh, they need something which is more proprietary and more closed but um, uh, anyway for me it's an advantage so because uh, it's very difficult that you lose any any file or any file gets corrupted or things like that um, as well you don't have to pay in advance for the software and keep on uh, maintaining it you just pay as you use you use uh, you know uh, whatever tokens you need for your project and when you're finished it's done you don't need to keep on maintaining something that you are not using okay and every time they just release a new version or whatever it's gonna be just uh, ready to use when, when you come back to to the to the software so I think it's a, it's a very cool ad you know that, that is uh, just on cloud okay they told me that as, uh, as well it can be installed in your own server so if any company or you need for a project that it's it's uh, you need the the software installed on your servers I think they can do it for you okay uh, another very good thing is that the parts that you get out of the of the optimization they are just ready to print Okay, you don't need to make any post-processing on, on them. You know, even you can get them with uh, um, the support added to them. So it's just uh, plug and play more or less. Okay, and the best thing of this is that it's extremely easy to use. I mean, it's even 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 for for any designer with no idea of engineering, just can uh, put the part here and be optimized it with its... Uh, uh, motor intelligent artificial artificial intelligence motor you just throw it in and it will uh, give you the results of very nice and very well piece made you know so that's a very very interesting feature you know that the you know in a few minutes uh, without any uh, lessons you can just start to to create your own your own parts and being optimized you know here is a small gallery where you can see some models from different users you know they are very nice models here you know and hope you liked the video i made a small article that you can uh, read i put a link on the description so there is more information on that article and hope you like it and see you next time